Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 161. A candy bar is better than a pie when it comes to fractions. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Now, before we get into the episode, this week's positivity comes from the chat from our recent math strategy session. These sessions are something we created for the members of the Build Math Minds PD site, but we decided to do the recordings live so that anyone could attend. So if you are interested in attending our next two sessions, we've only got two left at the time that this gets released, um, we, that we are doing live, you can go to buildmathminds.com strategy dash sessions to register for free but you have to be there live as the recordings are only available inside the Build Math Mind site for our members. So if you don't wanna jot down that URL, just remember you can go to the show notes page, which is buildmathminds.com slash 161, because this is episode 161. So Irma posted in the chat during our last session on the place value decomposition strategy, and she said, Today's session has been amazing. I love spending Sundays with you all. It's so wonderful and inspiring to be amongst such a professional group of teachers. Well, thank you, Irma, for attending, and I'm so glad that you've been enjoying these sessions. All right, into our topic for today. This last week, we just had Pi Day 3.14 or March 14th, which on a side note, happens to be one of my best friend's birthday. Happy birthday, Mel. I know I already told you happy birthday, but and this is late, but I'll just formally say it on here. Happy birthday, Mel. I love you. I know that lots of educators use pie, like apple and cherry, to help kids understand pie, the ratio of circles circumference to its diameter. But there is one area of math that pie, P-I-E, is used a lot but it really shouldn't be, and that's fractions. And not just pi, but circles in general are overused when we try to help kids develop their understanding of fractions. Now, let me clarify. I'm not saying you should never ever use circles. You can use circles, but it isn't the best model and should be used sparingly instead of as the main fraction model. Instead, Bar models are a much better choice along with number lines and double number lines as you progress further. In the book, right here, this is the one we're talking about today, Fractions, Percentages, Decimals, and Proportions, a Learning Teaching Trajectory for Grade 4, 5, and 6 by Franz van Geilen et al. And this comes from the Freudenthal Institute from the Netherlands. Um, they show many examples of contexts that elicit the bar model instead of circles. Two examples they show on the page that I'm going to be talking about are a loaf of bread and the status bar when like downloading or uploading something on a computer. Okay, so on page 35, they write, well-chosen context enables students to make the transition to working with a bar or another model. In the context of a story about a baker, the students can be asked how they can divide a French loaf into six parts. It is natural to envisage, it's, it's written a little differently than our envision, it is natural to envisage the French loaf as a bar. Working from this sort of situation, the bar can become a model for the students to imagine the procedure for dividing something into equal parts. The bar is the unit, and at the same time, the object to be divided. Students will recognize the bar as showing the part that has already been downloaded or copied. The figure on this page shows that about two thirds, or 65% according to the computer, of the file have been copied. 
In this book, we will mainly pay attention to the bar model and the double number line. However, these are not the only models that can play a role in this part of the curriculum. In some contexts, a rectangle or circle might be more suitable, and some fractions can be more easily read from these shapes. For percentages and decimals in general, the bar or the number line are the most obvious representational form to choose. They have the advantage that they can be used to express the proportional aspects of fractions, percentages, and decimals by writing different numbers above and below the line. Moreover, these models are useful not only for representing concrete situations, but also for providing visual support when reasoning with number relationships. By using bars and number lines with fractions, percentages and decimals, as well as as well with as proportions. It really does say that, as well with as proportions. We make a clear connection between the different parts of the curriculum. So to summarize, what I take away from this is that the bar models and number lines are one of the best ways to represent fractions. They aren't the only way. I personally love them because it doesn't take much to draw them. They're easy to ensure that you're making multiples of them that are the same size for like when you're comparing fractions. And it's easier to partition and ensure that the pieces are equal size, much more so than I think circles are. However, they also help your students as they extend their understanding to ideas of ratios, proportions, percents, and decimals. This book helps us see just how powerful the bar and number lines are long-term for students. Throughout the book, they show multiple examples of using these models, but I'd like to share just a couple of my favorite math scenarios that I think that these models are super helpful for. So number one, fraction sense of relating fractions to benchmark numbers. Now I'm gonna be showing some visuals for the rest of this. So if you happen to be listening to this on the podcast app, um, also come over and check us out on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash build math minds. Uh, I always post a video that goes along with these episodes and some of these are much more visual so it's kind of easier to see. So again, number one is that those models help us develop the fraction sense of relating fractions to benchmark numbers. The benchmark numbers are things like a half and one, one and a half, two, and so on, which like you can see a half and a whole easily on a circle. But take a look at the difference in the visuals when you show two and a half using circles. It's not a continuous thing. They're seen as separate pieces. When it's in a bar model, it's seen more continuously, and this model can easily connect to a number line. The second thing that I really love these models for is helping kids understand a fraction as a set and understanding that the value of a fraction changes based upon the value of that set or that whole. Like a half is a half of a whole, right? but the value of that half changes based upon if the whole is one versus if it's four things, now a half is actually equal to two. This is where the double number line starts to come into play because yes, it is a half, but that half's value is now two. And then what if our whole is now 400 things? If it's 400 things and now we're getting half of it, it is still half, but now that half's value is 200. So this is a really weird scenario for kids because when you say like you get two cookies, two is just two, like you can visualize that, but visualizing a half is much more complex because you have to know what the whole is to know what that value of a half is or any other fraction you're using. So the third thing that I really love the bar models and number lines for, and this one was a big aha for me personally, uh, for using number lines and, and especially double number lines is to help me better, better understand those percent of type problems. Like, do you remember problems like if $15 is 25% of the cost of your bill at a restaurant, what was the total bill? I 
hated those problems. I was taught a set of rules that basically made me a number plucker on those problems. They, I was told is means that you put the equal sign there and of is where you put the multiplication sign. So I just plucked out the numbers and it becomes 15 equals, 15 is 0.25 or 25% times B, the bill whatever you know that total amount is. And then you just had to solve for the variable. Instead, if you put this idea onto a number line, it actually helps me, I don't know if it helps you, but it helps me make sense of the problem. $15 is at the 25% mark. It says $15 is 25% of the bill. So I'm gonna put $15 at that 25% mark. And then when I'm looking at this, I could see, man, if I just double that, that gets me to 50% of the bill. So $30 is 50% of the bill. Well, then I can just take that and double it. And that gives me 100% of the bill. So 100% of the bill is 60%. Now you might have solved that differently, um, even using the number line, like even using that same visual, you might have saw that differently. But that visual of the double number line actually helps me make sense of that problem and not just be mindlessly following a set of procedures to solve those percent type problems. So that was like seriously mind blowing to me and I never was taught that way. It was something that I was introduced to as an adult as I started building my own understanding of fractions and these different models. And I really was just like, I, this makes so much more sense now to me. So again, these models are not the only math scenarios um, that being able to visualize fractions linearly, like on a number line in the bar model, is helpful for. They are just some that have helped me personally. And don't forget, circles can be a great model for certain fraction situations, but they should not be the main model and should definitely not be the only model that we are using because it doesn't transfer, transfer to other mathematical concepts like the percentages and decimals and proportions and ratios, okay? So next time you're working with fractions with your students, use scenarios that involve rectangular items like those candy bars instead of circular items like pie as your context so that they can have that visual of a bar model and not just a circular model. Until next week, my fellow recovering traditionalists, keep building math minds.